with the new generation of Velux roof windows, we've made installation even easier. This video is a guide to the complete installation of a Velux roof window installed at recessed installation height on a tiled roof. Today, we'll be installing a GGL MK043070 Pine Center Pivot roof window with an EDJ MK042000 flashing, which includes a BDX insulation collar and a BFX underfelt collar. We will also use a BBX vapor barrier. The first difference you'll notice when installing new generation Velux roof windows is that the method of opening the box has changed. To open the box, simply lay it flat on the floor depress the tabs and pull the flaps loose. These are then folded back and the box can be flattened down and used as a solid base to work from. Once you've opened the box, you'll notice a few other changes. The window box now only contains the installation brackets, which can be found in a pack at the base of the window, and the hood section, which is contained in a box at the top of the window. The cover parts, which were previously supplied with the window, are now supplied with a flashing kit, so that you'll have them when you need them. Also, the Part 5 flashing parts are now pre-installed on the window. The installation instructions have also changed. These now offer alternatives depending on the color-coded square found on your Velux flashing kit. They also feature QR codes to link you to useful installation videos. As we are using an EDJ flashing, which has a blue-colored square, we will follow the instructions on the blue section of the fitting guide. The next stage is to remove the sash from the frame for ease of handling. The method for carrying this out has also been improved. Firstly, stand the window upright and remove the wedge-shaped polystyrene blocks, which can be discarded. Next, engage the control bar by pushing it upwards and inwards until it clicks into place. The sash can now be opened and the polystyrene blocks on the face of the control bar should be removed, turned around and placed on the bridge piece at the top of the sash for protection. Now, fully rotate the sash and rest the window on the polystyrene blocks, with the frame at an angle. The buttons on the hinges should now be depressed to disengage the sash from the frame, and the frame lowered onto the ground. The sash can now be left in a safe place until we need it later. Next, the opening for the window should be established to the correct size. The width of the opening should be between 50 and 60 millimeters greater than the width of the window itself. In order to work out the height and position of the opening, the top edge of the lower installation batten should be positioned 140 millimeters above the first course of tiles below the window, leveled and fixed in place. Measure upwards from this batten a distance the height of the window plus 145 millimeters to find the location of the upper installation batten. Fix the upper batten, ensuring that both battens overhang the width of the opening by the required amount. When installed, the bottom of the window will sit 90 mm above the lower installation batten. Infill battens should be installed at the sides of the opening top and bottom, as this is where the brackets will rest. Excess felt should now be trimmed back and fixed in place over the surrounding timbers to provide additional waterproofing. Now we'll open the flashing box using the tear-off strips. This box also contains our BDX insulation collar. The instructions for the flashing box can now be referred to for the remainder of the installation. We'll now assemble the insulation collar. The corners clip together as shown. Then it's lifted into position, tight to the top of the opening, ready for the frame to be installed. Next, we need to fix the brackets to the window, following the instructions in the blue section of the fitting guide. You'll notice a red and blue line running down the side of the window. These indicate where the brackets should be fitted, dependent on the color code of the flashing that you're using. With our EDJ flashing, the bracket should be fitted at the blue line level. As we can see from the instructions, in blue line installations, the brackets are fitted to the sides of the window at the top and bottom. The pre-drilled pilot holes will help you position the brackets correctly. These are now fitted using the screws supplied in the bracket box. Self-adhesive foam gaskets from the flashing box are fitted to the sides and top of the window. The frame of the window is now lifted into position, ready to be fixed in place. Firstly, we will fully fix the bottom brackets of the window with a 30mm and 80mm screw in each bracket, making sure that the 80mm screws are drilled through the batten and counterbatten, if the roof has one, into the rafter. At the top of the window, a 30mm screw is used in one of the horizontal slotted screw holes, but left 10mm proud. 
The Part 5 flashing parts can be removed at this stage if you find it makes it easier for you to take the sash in and out of the frame. These are unclipped using the plastic fixing on the underside of the cover part. Replace the sash into the frame by lining up the curved hinge pieces of the sash with the corresponding slots on the frame. Carefully look at the space between the sash and frame at the sides of the window. If the space is larger at the top than the bottom on one side, a fine adjustment can be made with a crowbar on the outer edge of the frame to square the window up and bring it into line. Next, open the window and look at the opening at the bottom between the sash and frame. This should be even the whole way across. If it's not, the black wedge supplied in the flashing box can be used on the top bracket opposite the side on which the opening is wider to prop it up slightly and even the opening between the sash and frame. Once all required adjustments have been made, the sash can be removed from the frame again by depressing the hinge buttons to disengage. Now fix the upper brackets by fully fixing the 30mm screws and adding 80mm screws through the battens to the rafters. We are now ready to fit the BFX underfelt collar, which is also found in the flashing box. The first stage is to mark the position of the transverse drainage gutter. Place it at an angle to allow for adequate runoff of any water that might run down the roofing felt, for instance, from broken tiles above. Once the position is marked, if the roof is counter-battened, remove a section of the counter-batten so that the gutter can be fixed to the rafter. If the roof is not counter-battened, simply skip this step. Next, cut a flap in the felt, which can later be laid into the gutter. The supplied sealant can be used to protect the sides of the flap. The BFX collar is now positioned around the frame of the window. The end with more projecting material is positioned at the top. Remove the plastic covers from the strips of sealant on the collar and foam strips and fix it to the edges of the window frame, dressing the corner flaps as described in the instructions. Now staple the collar around the battens to dress it snugly to the roof structure. Cuts can be made at the bottom of the collar to dress it around counter battens if you have them. At the top of the window, fix the gutter in place and fold the underfelt collar over and into it. Cut off any excess, then dress the flap in the roofing felt into the gutter and secure it into place using the clips supplied. Now we're ready to start fitting the flashing kit. Some of the parts previously supplied with the window, such as parts 2 and 4, are now supplied with the flashing kit. Profiled tiles, such as those used on this installation, should be chamfered below the window to allow the bottom apron of the flashing to sit neatly and water to run off. Chamfer the tiles, taking care to make sure that the highest point of the tile when viewed in profile sits no more than 250 millimeters from the bottom of the window. Take flashing part one, the bottom apron, and place it in position, shaping it over the tiles. Now bend the pleated apron of the flashing back, no more than 45 degrees. This will help the apron sit tightly over the tiles. Place the apron back in position and fix in place by screwing down part two, making sure to also fix it to the sides of the frame. Part three, the side flashing parts onto which the tiles sit, are slid into place and fixed with tabs. At this stage, the Part 5s pre-installed on the window should be removed if you've not done so already. Part 4, the side frame covers, are now placed in position and clipped into place. The Part 5s are refitted by slotting them into the black housing at the top of the window and clicking the plastic fixing into place at the hinge. The hood section of the window should now be screwed into place, making sure to discard the polystyrene packing piece on the inner side. Finally, part 7, the top flashing piece, is positioned, then fixed with fold-down tabs either side of the window. We can now finish tiling around the window. The foam gasket on the side flashing should be cut to match the profile of the tiles where they meet the flashing. Refer to your instructions on how the tiles should be positioned around the window as this may vary depending on where in its camber the tile had to be cut. 
you should leave a gap of 30 to 60 millimeters between the sides of the window and the tiles. Again, trim the foam gasket at the top of the window to match the profile of the tile, remembering to leave 60 to 150 millimeters of space between the tile and the top of the window to allow rainwater to drain freely. The bottom apron should be given a final dress down. Now replace the sash into the frame. The last stage is to fit the BBX vapor barrier. The vapor barrier is dressed into the internal lining rebate of the window using the tool provided, then fixed in place in each corner using the screws provided, before being taped to the building's existing vapor barrier to prevent any moisture from inside the building reaching the roof structure. The installation is now complete.